Hello Internet, hello folks. In this video I showed the preparation of some engraving jobs using FreeCAD. For demonstration I will mill some text and small SVG graphics onto a workpiece using a Genmitsu 4030 CNC and compare two different router bits. The goal is to show you the basic workflow you can follow in your own projects and to understand the different options in relation to the font type, for example standard true type font and single line or stroke fonts. We will have a look onto the different working steps to prepare the job for CNC milling. So there is a lot to cover, therefore let's start with the content. The first step is to define a sample workpiece. To design it we first open FreeCut and switch to the part design workbench. Create a new document and create a new body. First we need to define a 2D geometry to create our 3D objects from. To do this I create a new sketch with a sketch oriented on the XY plane. Use the create rectangle tool and draw a rectangle around the coordinate center. The parametric CAT modeling approach is based on 2D sketches. Use a symmetry constraint tool and make two corners symmetrical with respect to the center of the plane. FreeCAD shows you the status of the solver in the upper left corner. Within these sketches all geometry parts must be fully constrained. This means zero degrees of freedom, no more moving parts. The, to eliminate the remaining degrees of freedom, add a vertical and a horizontal dimension constraint to the rectangle. To get a complete constraint sketch, you must eliminate all degrees of freedom. The solver on the left should be display a fully constrained sketch. Use the escape key to exit the constraint mode and you will see the mouse pointer will display a default arrow. Now we can go ahead and create a 3D object. To do this close the sketcher workbench. Now we are back in the part design workbench. Use the pad tool to extrude the 2D shape and create a 3D object. Check the reverse box to extrude in the negative Z direction and make the XY coordinate plane the top plane. We will use this plane as a reference plane to place our text on. Let's take a quick look at Wikipedia and see different form formats. TrueType is a standard for outline forms. OpenType is a format for scalable computer fonts and builds on its predecessor TrueType. Both fonts work with closed loops and straight lines and curves. It is not possible to create a TrueType or OpenType font with one or more strokes because the glyph shapes consist of a series of closed outlines and you need open outlines to create a single line form. Therefore many fonts have double lines and this can lead to all kinds of trouble during the toolpath generation. Let's look at three examples of true type fonts. When I use the first font and use the contour lines for engraving, the outer and inner outlines are used to create the engraving toolpath. The second example shows a form where the outlines of the letters have an equal distance. Again, the outlines are used to create the engraving toolpath. Other toolpath generation algorithms like uh, VCarve can use this form to create a single center line to follow the shape of the letter and to create a toolpath. The third example is indeed a single line form and the engraving toolpath algorithm can use this form to generate a single line toolpath for machining.
Now let's switch to the draft workbench. In the draft workbench, I use the shape string tool to create a text path object on my top layer. Use the mouse to select the location on my top layer plane where you want to place the string. You can then change the parameters of the string in the creation dialog. Then you can enter the font, the text size and text as you like it. I use a sentence from a poem by Robert Frost, the road not taken, as an example. I choose a single line or stroke font to have a path for a tool to follow. For example, for CNC engraving or for a laser cutter toolpath. This is different from the V-curve path algorithm, where the path generation tries to find a center line between two paths by using special solution algorithms and ranges. The shape string should be positioned directly on the working plane. In our case, the top layer plane with zero height. Check the position property on the data tab of the shape string. If everything is correct, close the shape string dialog. You can change the settings at any time and also modify the shape string using the draft workbench tools. For ex example, you can scale, you can move the shape string as you like. For engraving, it is not necessary to create a sketch from the shape string. You can use the shape string directly to create your toolpath. For a more complete example, I am also adding a small graphic ornament. Therefore, I imported a SVG based geometry into the FreeCAD project. FreeCAD then creates multiple geometry objects for different parts of the SVG geometry. For ease of use, I selected the geometry objects and use them to create one sketch that can be used for engraving. This makes the overall handling with the ornament graphic much easier. Again, I use the design tools in the draft workbench to scale and reposition the ornament graphic. Switch to the path workspace and create a job setup. First, let's set the dimension of the stock material. The, the thickness of my workpiece is already prepared and I have no material on the top or the bottom. In the video I was just testing the height settings, so I used a small amount on the top and the bottom to see if it would affect the path genera generation. But it is not relevant for this project, therefore you can set the height to zero. In the general tab, I made sure that the body, the shape text and the ornament are selected. If not, use the edit button to change your settings and add or remove objects you want to create a toolpath for. On the output tab, I selected the GIBL post processor I want to use to create my G code. I also specified the output path and the name of my G code file. In the tool selection, I add a 3mm 30 degree engraving cutter. I set my feed rate to an average feed rate of 300 mm horizontally and 150 mm vertically at 12,000 RPM. These are the settings for my hard plywood material. For demonstration purpose, I also added a 60 degree V-bit with a 6 mm diameter shaft and um, therefore I will use a different colored. 
Since the engraving bits are not part of my setup, I had to copy an, a six, I had to copy an existing tool setup and modify it. To create a new tool, simply select an existing file, rename it and change the settings in the file. Now it's time to create an engraving toolpath. To do this, I select the shape string to select the geometry and use the engraving tool to create a toolpath with the 3mm engraving bit. This creates a new operation in the job structure. Make sure you have selected the correct base geometry. Most important, here are the depth settings. The start depth is zero and it is at the level of the top surface of the stock material. The end depth is the depth of the engraving and I choose one millimeter. With the step down depth, we can limit the depth per engraving run. If you confirm the dialog or close it, the path will be created. The toolbar simulation in FreeCAD is not very detailed, but it will give you an idea what you can expect from the result. For an exact calculation in FreeCAD, make sure you inserted the correct measurements of your tool or router bit in the tool library. The next operation is the generation of the toolpath for the graphic ornament. For this I use the clone object from the previous operation as the base geometry. In the same way as before with the text objects, I now create a toolpath for the graphic object. Again I select the engraving operation and set a depth of 0.5 mm and the step down size of max 1 mm for safety. I leave the rest of the settings as default. The contour curves of the vector graphic are used for the generation of the toolpath. The last thing I did was to define an engraved frame. I created an engraving process and selected the various body edges as base geometry. To do this, the body geometry must be part of the job setup defined earlier. The rest is already set and can be used out of the box. With all operations properly defined, I can simulate the toolpath. When everything looks good, I use the post-processing tool to generate a G-code. I use the candle software to set up my CNC and I used it as my G-code transmitter. Now it's time for machining on my Genmitsu 4030 CNC. For the first run, I started with a small 3mm engraving cutter. For detailed engraving, the small 30 degree engraving bit did a very good job, especially with this hard plywood and this hard surface. For demonstration purpose, I changed the project setup to use a 60 degree V bit with a 6 mm shank and exported this G code. I Change the collet in the CNC to support the 6mm sh uh, shank and mill the project. Take a look at the differences. After changing the collet, I inserted a 60 degree V bit with the 6mm shank to compare it against the first run. Have a look on the result of the second run and also on the result of the third run with slightly changed project settings. I 
I think the details are a little bit too small, especially if you look onto the inner contours. Um, therefore, I modified the depth to 0.5 millimeters in FreeCut for the text and created a third run, which looked much better. I think the 60 degree V bit is made for bigger sized engravings. And for this fine details here in my example, the 30 degree 3 millimeter engraving bit is perfect. But it is clear that the 6 millimeter bits are much more versatile. They can be used with more materials and usage scenarios. I still have to test different feeds and speeds, which also have an influence on the outcome. But this might be a topic for another video. The resume is this small engraving bits do a very good job for detailed engraving, for example, for my plywood material. That's it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section. If you like the content, please also like the video and give me some positive feedback. More CNC and carving projects are in the pipeline for the future. Subscribe to the channel and use the notification bell to be notified. Have fun, stay creative and start building something by free time.